All right, good morning, everybody. A uh, beautiful Saturday uh, this morning. Good to have you with us today. If you got your Bibles, let's turn to the 37th chapter of Psalms this morning. The Lord just kind of laid this on my heart while I was praying. I know it's a very familiar passage that we read a good bit, but uh, it's always good to hear it again and stir up our pure minds by the way of remembrance, as Peter says. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. For all your blessings and all that you do for us, Lord, we just ask you to bless our prayer lesson this morning. Give us the right word to sing. Give us hearts and minds ready to receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 1 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily... Thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Good morning, Brother Stephen. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest. I love that. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that who, who of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the earth I'm sorry, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. That's good, isn't it? All right, it starts by fret not. Another way of saying that is don't worry. Go Matthew 11, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He says, Jesus says what? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, right? And there's a lot of times we see the wicked people, and it seems like they prosper, and seem like they're getting ahead, and they're not held accountable for anything. They can lie, they can steal, they can cheat, they can murder, they can rob. And you see, you see these celebrities and how they get away with all kinds of things. And it seems like if you got money, you can get away with murder, right? But the Bible says, don't you worry about that. The next part says, for they shall soon. Their judgment day is coming. Their reckoning day with the Lord is going to come. They may not have to answer for their problems or their sins on this earth, but they will answer for them before God. Amen? where they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. It will catch up to them, right? For us today, what is he telling us to do? He says you need to trust. First, trust in the Lord. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Read that for me, Brother Hill. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 3 it says, Trust in the Lord. Amen. So you see there, he says, trust in the Lord. And how do you trust in the Lord? With all of your heart. Everything that you got. I mean, I can look and see how he's got a brand new car, a brand new house. He's wearing brand new clothes. He's got all this stuff. Here I may be struggling. But he says what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. I don't understand, Lord, why they're getting away with what they're getting away with. And I can't. I can't have things. Even when I was at, at whenever I was working... There'd be certain people, they could come to work late every day and nothing would happen. They could they could steal or something, and they seem like they would get away with it. Nothing would ever happen to them. I'd do something very small, I would get written up or get in trouble. And sometimes it just doesn't seem fair. That's what us leaning to our own understanding. The scripture tells that God shows mercy to whom he will show mercy and whom he will he harden it. There's some people just need a little bit more grace. There's some people that just need a little bit more love than others. You know, God understands each and every one of our hearts this morning, doesn't he? So he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. And he says, and he, I'm going to take care of you, right? Lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways and everything that you do, acknowledge him. Lord, I'm recognizing just how great and how awesome that you are today. Thank you for all your blessings in my life. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. Do good even if you're the only one doing it. 
do good. If everybody else around you is doing wrong, you continue to do good. We don't have to answer for them. We have to answer for ourselves. We're going to have to stand before God. He says, well, we can't say, well, they were doing wrong and no one had nothing happened to them, so I decided to do what they was doing. That's not how it works. Each and every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to the Lord. So it says, you don't worry about what they're doing. You make sure your life is right where it needs to be with the Lord this morning. Amen? we got to make sure our life's right with God. Do good, and so shalt thou dwell the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. And if you look at the process here, there's always a season, for they shall soon be cut down. There's a season. God gives them a little, a little grace. I'm going to give you a chance to make things right. And after that, that period of that window closes, the opportunity of repentance, when time runs out, they shall soon be cut down. And wither like the grass. And what does it tell about it tells us about what we should be doing? Look at Galatians chapter six, verse number nine. He says, And let us not be weary in well doing. Let us not be weary in doing what is right. You trust in the Lord and you do good. And says, And don't be weary doing it. He says, For in due season there's gonna be a time when the Lord's gonna bless you. You have to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. He says what? And let us not be weary in well-doing. When we're doing what is right and everybody else doing what is wrong, when they're getting away with it and they're prospering and it looks like they're getting ahead and we're falling behind, he says, don't you worry about what you're doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're going to prosper. God's going to bless if we what? Stay faithful. Not worry about what the evil do. We can't change to what we're doing to do what the world's doing, right? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2 tells us what? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. So he says, trust in the Lord and do good, knowing that God's going to prosper you. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily God's going to feed you. If you look down here at verse 25, he says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Why? Because God, but my God shall supply all your need. So you see how all the scriptures just kind of come together when you start to read it. And there's just one verse, trust in the Lord. And what did Paul say in Romans chapter 8? He says, for I know that all things work together for my good. First Thessalonians, Paul says, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you, right? In everything, give thanks. Delight thyself also in the Lord. What does that tell us today? Enjoy doing things for God. Get, get your enjoyment not from the things of the world, but get your enjoyment, get your joy from doing things for God. Coming to the 9 o'clock prayer, listen to the word, listen to the singing, the preaching, all the things that we do for God's word. And when we read it, that should, we should be delighting ourselves in it. And he shall give you what? The desires of thine heart. Not just will he supply our needs. There are times when God gives us what we want. And God will what give us above and beyond what we ask. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. I'm sorry, it's chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20, at page 1207. Now it says, Unto him that is able. Do you believe that God is able this morning? Yes. Do you believe that God is able? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that you ask or think. Why? Because we have a great God that can do great things. Amen? According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So if we trust, we delight ourselves in the Lord. He will give us the desires of the heart. And then number five, he says, then you have to be completely committed. Paul told Timothy, he says, give yourself wholly to them. You've got to be committed to this. You can't be a weekend warrior. You can't just serve the Lord on Sunday only. 
you got to be completely committed to God's ways. Commit thy way unto the Lord. In other words, you got to be completely committed to God. Not worry about everyone else is doing. He tells us not to fear, not to fret, not to worry, and not to be dismayed. I said, I'm going to lead you and I'm going to prosper you in the way that I want you to go. It's not in us that we walk direct our steps. Look at Jeremiah chapter 10. Come on, Holy Ghost. That's good in this morning. The Lord just giving these verses to us. He says, verse 23, O Lord, I know. And that's something that we all need to come to with understanding and, and, and know for ourselves that the way of man is not in himself. Lord, it ain't what I want to do. It's not my will, but let your will be done. He says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not man that walketh to direct his steps. God will direct our steps. Look at Psalms 37, 24, uh, or 23, I'm sorry. He says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I got to commit my way unto God, and God will direct my steps. Right? Turn back to, uh, I think it's Psalms 19. Oh, that's, let me see if I can find that. Just give me a second. Uh, Psalms 32, I'm sorry. Verse number 8. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. I'm going to show you how to go. Right? He says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. God, I want to be completely committed to you. We can't have a relationship with the Lord where we think we can go around and fool around with all these other things and still be committed unto God. Matthew 7 tells us that you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have two masters. Paul says you cannot sit at the Lord's table and at the tables of devils. You cannot receive the things of God and, uh, and then act like you're going to and live in the world. If you're going to re want to receive the blessings of the Lord, let's not worry about what the evil people are doing. We can pray for them. And he says, don't you be jealous of them either. Man, I sure wish I could get out there and do all that stuff. It must be nice to ride your boat on Sunday. You ever see people, instead of coming to church, they got their boats and head to the lake. Where, where are your boats going to take you? Is that going to take you to heaven? So you can, sometimes, I mean, I don't, this may not always be the case, but you really can't have a boat and have a relationship with God. You can't enjoy the things of the world because they're going to pull you away from doing the things for the Lord. There's a lot of people that will will take their boat out and, and still come to church. But there are some people that will take that boat and say, well, I'm just going to enjoy the river. There's nothing wrong with fishing, but you always got to put God first. Mm -hmm. I can't miss church so I can go fish. You can go fish any other day of the week. Why do you have to miss church to do it? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. He says, instead of worry, rest. Instead of being jealous, wait. Wait for the Lord to bless you. And that's exactly what God has done. Rest in the Lord. In other words, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm at peace. With, I'm, I'm thankful for what God has blessed me with. I don't need all that to be have a good and happy life. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And there's some, and, and I believe it's First Timothy 6, where Paul says there's some out there that think that gain is godliness. That the bigger the boat, the bigger the car, the bigger the truck, the bigger the house, the more happy you are. And that ain't always the case. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith be content. And then it goes back in Hebrews 10. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Oh, so they got all this stuff. Why can't I have that? Well, God can give you whatever he wants to give you. Right. But first, you got to what? Trust, delight, and commit. And he will give you the desires of your heart. And that's, and then he says, right? trust, trust, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him while I'm going through the valley, I'm waiting for the Lord. 
I know that I can be at peace no matter what part of the, my life I'm at. If I'm going through tribulation, Paul tells me to do what? Be patient in tribulation. God's going to bring you through it, right? Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. David continues this in Psalm 73. Verse 12, it says, Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world, they increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. He says, oh, all these people, they're prospering and getting away with everything, and I, and I get punished every time I do something wrong. It just doesn't seem right. Why? Because of whom the Lord loves, he chastens. If you are one of God's people and you're living for the Lord and you do wrong, God's going to correct you for it. He may not get a, actually get a whip and literally beat you, but that it'll be on your brain, it'll be on your heart. When you do wrong, God will convict you of it. Well, he get away with it. I can't. If you're really living for the Lord, you will not want to do evil. And when you do make a mistake, you're going to want to correct it as fast as possible because God's hand will lay heavy upon you until you do. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. When the Lord convicts you when you do wrong, I got to fix that. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't function. I know, I know that's wrong, so you have to fix it. His Lord's hand laid heavy upon me. All day long I've been plagued and chastened. Why? Because God loves me. Hebrews 12 tells us if you are without chastisement, then you are a bastard and not a son. For whom to love, he corrects and he chastens. If you look in, uh, I believe it's Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and what? Repent. Let's see if we can find that for us real quick. Uh, where's that at, Sister Cheryl? Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse number 19. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And if you've done wrong and you're living for the Lord, God, i got to fix this. I can't do that. I can't do that and get away with it. Why? Because God lays this stuff heavy on your heart. I have to fix this. And there's a, evil people out there. There's, there's crooked, crooked business people that do all kinds of stuff wrong, and they think they can go and get away with it. One of these days, it will catch up with them. If we're doing business, we have to be honest, we have to be fair, and we have to be straightforward. A friend of mine, Brother Dexter, so he's a car salesman. He says, people ask him all the time, how can you sell cars and be a preacher? How can you be a lawyer and be a Christian? How can you be a doctor and be saved? I mean, because you don't, you're saved before you're anything else. Before I am a car salesman, a Pepsi man, or a computer salesman, whatever it is, I'm saved first. I'm a Christian before I'm a white person, before I'm a husband, before I'm a father. I'm a Christian first. And my, everything that I do, whether I'm working for Pepsi or working for Coke or working for cars, that's the priority in my life. And that's what leads me and guides me into doing what is right. Can't worry about what that car salesman down the road does. I have to do things the right way. It may cost me a little more, but the Bible says, swear to your own hurt and what? Change not. Do what is right. We always have to do what is right. Amen? And then he says, verse 8, cease from anger. What? Anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Anger makes us say things and do things that, sort of like when you're drunk. They say a drunk man speaks a sober mind. An angry man also speaks a sober mind as well. So that I really wanted to say this, but you don't say it till you get really angry. And when you get really angry, that hatred, that that uh, really comes out. So he says, stop being that way. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Why? The wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. 
when we get when we act out of our anger and we start treating people bad and yelling at them and cussing them out we're not working the righteousness of God he says we have to stop stop from being angry how do we stop from being angry we have to have the love of God in our heart we have to trust that the Lord's going to do that God's going to bless we have to delight ourselves in the Lord we have to trust in God with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. I understand I have to yell at you. Why? Because I'm mad. How many of us doesn't get angry from time to time? But the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Make things right. Don't, don't be angry. I mean, it's nothing wrong with being angry. There's a, that's just a natural human emotion. But he says, be angry and sin not. That's what the scripture says. Amen? So it says it's best if we just try to stop getting angry. And there's a lot of things. I, I guarantee everybody watching today, everybody sitting in this room today is angry with our president right now. You go out and you pay $100 for to fill up your tank, or, or fill your car up with gas. It just gets you angry. You see all the mess going around in the world. And it just gets you angry. It gets you mad. Why is this happening? And then you feel frustrated because you can't do nothing about it. We got four more years of this guy. You get angry and you get frustrated. And then that's where we really need to delight ourselves in the Lord and commit our way in Him and trust the Lord, especially when we see what's all going on around us. Because all you will do, if you watch the news, all it will do is make you mad. Ah! And you feel frustrated and you feel helpless. And He says, then stop watching the news. If it's going to get you that mad. And start reading your Bible. And we know that He says we're threatening ourselves because of evildoers. Putin, he's going to be cut down in the grass. Yeah. He's an evil, evil, evil man. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, for neither shall be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they will be cut off. They will be cut down like the grass. God will make sure of that. Every dictator that I've ever seen, Mussolini, remember Benito Mussolini? He was one of the greatest, one of the most ruthless dictators in Italy during World War II. And what did they do to him? They found him, the people found him, and dragged him and hung him in the streets. And it's exactly what happened. Hitler went in and killed himself. They think you're so powerful and you're so good. When Saddam Hussein was out there killing people, where did they find him? He was hiding in a hole. Why? Well, because he was cut down. Every one of these people who think they're so big and they're so powerful, one of these days they're going to have a day of reckoning. All we got to do is trust in God. God will take care of it. Saddam Hussein, I was thinking about this the other day, his two sons were the most miserable excuses for human beings you've ever seen in your life. They would just get away with whatever. They would murder and rape and pillage and do whatever they want. Eventually, it caught up with them. They got caught up with the United States Marines. The Marines caught up with them, and they met their justice. We just to make sure that we trust in the Lord. We stop doing and we God will take vengeance. And what does he tell us to do in Romans 12? This is how Christians are supposed to behave. This is what the Word of God says. If we really want to understand, verse 17, it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay saith the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If, thy, if he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome with, of evil, but overcome evil with good. What does he tell us to do? Trust in the Lord and do good. We do what is right, even when everybody else is doing us wrong. We got to answer for ourselves. We don't have to answer for them. Amen? That's why it says, trust in the Lord and do good. You continue to do what is right. Continue to do what is right. And then, it says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Don't give no place to the devil. Don't give the devil no room to work in your life. 
When you're getting angry and we get frustrated, we're allowing the devil to, it starts to creep bitterness and strife in our hearts. And where bitter and strife is, the Bible says there's confusion and every evil work. That's right. That's right. So that's what he's saying, control your temper. One of, the, one of the fruits of the spirit we read the other night was what? Is temperance. Where we're able to control our temper. Long suffering means long temper. I'm able to control how I feel through God. I'm mad. Let me just let that go. And as I said the other night, sometimes we just have to yell out loud and scream. Ah! You know, just to let that feeling pass. He says, for evildoers, those that do wrong, shall be cut off. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. But what does God say? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So there may be somebody in your life who's just downright evil and hateful and mean, and they prosper and get away with it. Pray for them. Because their, their payment is coming. Their reckoning day with the Lord is coming. And, it, and Amos writes, says, what is it for you when the day of the Lord comes? Don't you be praying for that day. Don't you be asking the Lord to destroy anybody because it's a day of darkness and not light. Mm -hmm. You need to be praying that God saves them. God shows them mercy. Because the more often that we pray for mercy for others, the more mercy God will give us. That's the way you live as a Christian. That's what the Bible is teaching us. When we listen to it, evildoers shall be cut off. And there's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's just when it's going to happen. But you know it is going to happen. If they don't change and they don't get their life right, God will take vengeance upon them. Right? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. God will bless you if we what? We trust in Him. Right. We trust, we delight, and we commit ourselves unto the Lord. God will bless us for that we shall reap if we faint not. Amen? That's all I got for today. Thank the Lord for the word this morning. Amen. All right. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.